Save more than half price on fresh green asparagus, only $2.99 per pound. USDA bone and ribeye steak, just $12.99 per pound, saving $7. Select varieties of Fab 2X laundry detergent, only $4.99 for a 50-ounce bottle. Shop right lactose-free milk, just $3.79 for a 64-ounce carton. Kellogg's Corn Flake cereal, only $3.99 for a 12-ounce box. All stores open Monday through Saturday until 10 p.m. and Sunday, 9 a.m. to 7 p.m. for your shopping convenience. You can count on us. Live from Bermuda Broadcasting, this is ZBN TV 9 News. Good evening, everyone. It's Wednesday, February 14th. I'm Jasmine Patterson, and thanks for joining us. Government tonight taking the unusual step to notify the public of the release of a convicted pedophile described as dangerous. His name is Jonathan John Cumberbatch, who is 55 years old, described as a black male who lives in Warwick, and who had been jailed for sexual exploitation of a young person while in a position of trust, as well as sexual assault. In a statement sent out from Senator Kathy Simmons, the Attorney General and Minister of Legal Affairs, she states she is using her powers in line with the law and protocol to notify the public of his release from prison. Cumberbatch is deemed to be of the highest risk to the community. His photograph and physical description has also been released to the media and the wider public. Minister Simmons says she has carefully considered the facts of the case, including assessments from prison officials and his psychological report. Known victims have already been notified prior to the public notification. The minister notes decisions to notify the public are made on a case-by-case -case basis, and in this case, the danger to the community warranted disclosure. Schools will also be notified as well as all entities who work with children. The public is urged to review the information and, quote, exercise diligence and caution. Well, opposition leader Jean Atherton has offered an explanation as to why Michael Dunkley, her MP for Smith North, was appointed as shadow minister for government reform without a public announcement. And it's understood MP Craig Cannonier, who was initially in the shadow cabinet, now has no shadow responsibility at all. It's one of those things, I mean, I made my changes to the cabinet, sent, sent it up to the, to the speaker which is a normal place to do. I mean, I'm always, I'm always trying to make sure that, that as many of our MPs are involved in, the, in the, um, the process to be able to be a shadow to make sure that we realign our, our um, shadows with what the government has done. And so I'm you know, pleased that Michael's been able to take on that shadow <coughs> portfolio. And uh, counterpart, Levita Fogo. Okay. Yes, well, I mean, if you stop and think about it as, a, as the, the former um, Premier, mm -hmm. he should have a lot of knowledge about what had been done in the past, and and I always maintain that, as being the former government, we have to utilize um, our knowledge of what happened, what was in train, because many of the things that are happening right now were already in train. You know, as a government, we had started a lot of these things, so we're able to look at them and see how well they're implemented, and I, as I've said many times, we will support things that are good for Bermuda. And if there's something that we see it isn't good, then we will speak up and say, hey, not good. Or if there's something else that we believe is really bad, then yeah. we will try and make suggestions. My good friend, Mr. Kennedy, former, former, Mr. Former Premier, yeah. for, former. But he's not there. Well, um, at the current time, um, uh, Minister, shouldn't say Minister, Mr. Kennedy is, um, has decided to take a, uh, not to take a, a role in the cabinet, but he's he. Been missing a, Quite a bit up but, there. but but he, he 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 has been away, and but he's back on the island, and you will see him engaged in the in the budget debate because he obviously has lots of knowledge about works and engineering, which the, which was the mm -hmm. previous portfolio that he had. But um, Trevor Monis is taking over works and engineering in addition to Attorney General, and I don't know how many of you re remember that Trevor actually was a former Minister of Works and Engineering. Mm -hmm. So he has knowledge of that too. Okay. And, as you're, and if you're the Shadow Minister of um, Attorney General or Legislative Affairs, that, that is not, not quite as proactive. So you figure that Travo, with his experience, will be able to... Well, he'll be, he'll be able to manage, to manage them, manage yeah. That. 
A Canadian man has been cleared of charges for importing the synthetic opioid fentanyl. A jury found the Ontario resident Craig Lawrence not guilty on all counts last evening, according to the Gazette. He denied importing and possessing the drug with intent to supply on December 20th last year and maintained his innocence throughout the trial. We'll be back after this short break. You can count on us. Save more than half price on Purdue Fresh Lake quarters, only 99 cents per pound. Draw to strawberries or fresh blueberries, just $4.99 per package. Save $2.30 on Friendly's ice cream, just $4.29 for a 48-ounce tub. Hot price on DiGiorno Rising Crust Pizza, only $8.50 for a 12-inch box. Save $3 on Pompeian olive oil, only $6.99 for a 24-ounce bottle. Visit our website at www.marketplace.pm for more weekly specials. You can count on us. Your home, your life, security, be fire and burglar free. Right from your phone, monitor control, lock safes, doors, case, business, family safe. You're on the go and that's okay. BFG with you every day. Bermuda Security Group, your security, life safety, and monitoring experts. We're with you every step of the way. Bermuda Security Group, BSG.BM. Welcome back. The members of the newly formed Tax Reform Commission were unveiled before the public today during a press conference at Cabinet Office. David Byrd, the Premier and Finance Minister, said the mission of the Bipartisan Commission, which includes Opposition Leader Gene Atherton, will be to conduct a wholesale review of our system of revenue collection and taxation to make recommendations to Parliament. Our current system needs reform, not only to reduce the cost of doing business, and to encourage job growth in Bermuda, but also because our current system of taxation exacerbates inequality, which in turn reduces economic growth. It is our view that we can work with all stakeholders to design a system that enhances Bermuda's global competitiveness and ensures that those who can afford to pay more do pay more. Following the general election, Parliament passed the Tax Reform Commission Act would set up the promised Tax Reform Commission. Today, it is my pleasure to introduce the persons who have accepted my request to serve as commissioners to advance this vital issue. These commissioners have a mammoth task ahead of them, but I am confident that they are up to the challenge. As promised, this commission has representation from both political parties and a cross-section of expertise in Bermuda's economy. The Commission will be chaired by Mr. Ronald Simmons, a partner at Moore Stevens Butterfield, Chartered Professional Accountants. Chairman Simmons formerly served as a director of the Bermuda Monetary Authority and also on the Council of the Institute of Chartered Professional Accountants of Bermuda. Chairman Mr. Simmons will be joined by fellow commissioners, opposition leader Gene Atherton, Donald Scott, the former cabinet secretary, MP Wayne Ferbert, the junior finance minister, Mitch Blazer, economist Craig Simmons, and Brian Holdip of MJM. Mr. Simmons, given meanwhile, the, indicating his approval of the selected team. Given the numerous risks, uncertainties, and challenges facing our economy, we have a lot of work to accomplish. However, I am confident that we will be able to provide the Premier and the government with recommendations for comprehensive tax reform that is equitable, efficient, effective, transparent, and fair, whilst enhancing Bermuda's global competitiveness. The island's public school students are falling behind in mathematics, scoring below their target average in the International Cambridge Checkpoint Assessment. Students were tested in maths, science and English across the primary and middle schools. Bermuda has the only public school system in the world to use the International Cambridge Checkpoint Assessment, widely used by private schools. The 2016-2017 results for the primary and middle school level are in. It should be noted, the Cambridge Checkpoint Assessment is a diagnostic assessment with the sole purpose of providing students and teachers with specific feedback about each student's strengths and deficits in relation to the essential skills and knowledge for each of the core subject areas of English, math, and science. 
Two cohorts from the P6 and M3 levels were tested with the aim of averaging a target of 3.0 in each subject. P6 students scored better in English and science, averaging 3.3 and 3.4. However, they failed to reach their target in maths with a 2.4. Worryingly, at the M3 level, students tested below average across all three subjects, scoring a 2.7, 2.9, and 2.1. So, why are students failing in mathematics? Well, math has always been a phobia for many people. All right. Uh, it's not just our children, but to answer your question, it's the issue of teacher depth of knowledge and skill set. The evidence of the results indicate to us over the years, and we've been doing this for the last seven years. We see the patterns and trends where our students do well in mathematics and they don't do well. The content is demonstrating to us that when we're talking about areas of algebra, for example, which is a significant uh, examination uh, content. Uh, we see that our children aren't doing very well there. Well, it's not just the children. It's saying something also about the teaching. Cambridge officials will arrive March 5th to provide training for the island's maths teachers at the primary and middle schools. The ministry has also begun the process of hiring three education officers. Math is really the discipline of the now and the future, the present. You know, it's about now. Uh, when we talk about the digital age that we are in, and you hear a lot about STEM education, science, technology, engineering, mathematics, bring the arts in there. Uh, mathematics runs through everything. So there's never undermining, devaluing the importance of mathematics in our lives, even for those of us who may not like it. Dr. Simmons believes the curriculum is beneficial to students overall. However, good, consistent results requires patience. Change is difficult for people. Right? So from that perspective, uh, where people, and when I say people, the, the larger public are looking for an immediate gratification and response, this will take time. Out of the senior school students who sat their IGCSE exams, 97% passed English, 92% science, and 72% passed mathematics, earning between an A star and G. A full parent-friendly report is available now on the ministry's website at moed.bm. The senior training officer of the new group of 13 firefighters, Troy Ferbert, is keen on molding the newbies. Mike Sharp reports on part two of the new recruits at the Fire and Rescue Service. Divisional Officer Ferbert says they are the best of the best from 165 applicants and the training master has the latest on those that will be saving our lives in Bermuda. We are really ecstatic by having this group of, of individuals. Um, they range from ages 20 to 43. Um, they, they exemplified themselves during the recruitment process which was very grueling. Um, they do have a ways to go and um, we are looking forward to having them join the operational proper um, when they finish their course in, in August. There are not many jobs on the island that you are required to lay your life on the line every day. So we ask the new firefighters, how do they feel about risking their life to save someone else? I've always had a drive in me to want to help people. And to me, all life is precious. And so saving someone's life, whether it be someone you know or you don't know, um, it's just come sec it feels like second nature. I'm just thankful for the opportunity to be able to actually help someone. So it's, it's a part of my nature. I like to help people. So I'm just thankful that I, I'm getting the training that I need to be able to help people in the correct manner. So hopefully I could do that. Mm, I know this job requires a lot of sacrifice. So, and we've been taught that in a, in, a, in a situation you have to actually give up your life or have the risk of giving up your life for someone else. And as my colleague said, all life is precious, I believe that. And regardless of knowing them or not, I wouldn't hesitate to do my, do my duty. Being taught the skills and training, I won't be fearful to go save others' lives. And I'll be also mindful of protecting my life and my colleagues' lives. I believe the trainings we will take in the next six months will allow me to increase my self-confidence to be fearless in saving a life. I enjoy helping people, so um, my training hopefully don't let me down when I have to save someone's life. When I signed the contract, I knew it would be a risk, but just meeting these 12 other individuals, I can already trust them with my life and as well as to have my back in any sort of situation. 
Well, I feel pretty confident going into incidents when my risk, life will be at risk. Um, we're all going through the same training. Everyone's going to meet the same standard. And if something happens to me, I know these guys will come in and help me, and they'll always have my back. There's no secret about it. It takes a special person to rush into a, a burning building when other people are running the other way. But I think over these six months, we'll learn to trust the process, trust the person next to us, and I think we already are that special person that is willing to do that. As uh, having the, the uh, EMT training thus far, it taught us to be willing to be ready to assist anybody and treat anyone as they wish are in. So for, for, for being taught that, I'm ready to help save anybody's life. Belco wishes to advise residents in Southampton of an emergency interruption of service on Friday, February 16th from approximately 9 a.m. 9 rather to 2 p.m. Areas in Southampton to be affected are Riviera Road, Riviera Crescent, South Avenue, West Avenue, East Avenue, Sunnyside Park Drive, Sunnyside Park Lane, and part of Turtle Place. This interruption is necessary for emergency repairs. Belco apologizes for the inconvenience and thanks customers for their cooperation while this essential work is carried out to maintain and enhance service reliability. Well, hopefully today's downpour hasn't put a damper on your Valentine's Day plans. Let's head over to the AccuWeather headquarters to see if conditions will improve. AccuWeather is presented by BFNM Insurance Group. We now go to AccuWeather headquarters. The BFNM Insurance Group is pleased to bring you this AccuWeather forecast here on ZBM, and it's been a wet day. Hours of rain out there. Uh, this uh, front has deposited some extra moisture in the neighborhood, and now it's it's not really racing through the area but it's just kind of fizzling out so the steady rain is giving way to some scattered showers leftover showers that will be gradually tapering off as we step deeper into the evening and overnight tonight and we'll look forward to a brighter time most of the remainder of the week will be a lot nicer out there you can see the satellite estimated rainfall has kind of uh, underrepresented the showers that we've seen but at least it's trying to hint at reality. We've been a little cooler out there today, still 66 degrees. Humidity is high, obviously. We've had a lot of rain out there. Winds are just beginning to shift, uh, and uh, it'll be more of a northwest wind that winds out for the balance of the evening and the overnight. Water temps three degrees warmer than our air temperature today. Uh, on the inside, waves are small. On the outside, waves have grown a bit. Three to six footers are rolling out there. So tonight, the rain is tapering down to shower, 66 degrees. Make sure everybody uh, has the umbrella if you're going to be out there for any length of time, as there will be a few leftover nuisance showers. But tomorrow looks good. Mix of sunshine and some clouds, 71 degrees. will be a little warmer once again, and uh, life uh, will uh, improve as far as the quality of life. But as we take a look at the uh, tide forecast here, the tide chart, uh, high tide coming up very soon, 751. Low tide for the night owls at 159 a.m. High tide, 812 tomorrow morning. And then the low tide, if you want to head out there and look for some sand dollars, 237 p.m. will be uh, the second low tide. As we look at the gateway forecast, it is milder across the eastern part of North America. Toronto 44, that looks pretty good. Mid to upper single digits Celsius there. New York City, 57. Boston, 55. That's a, an April-like day, or at least late March-like day in those areas. Atlanta, 73. Nice little spring appetizer there. Miami's been running warm, uh, near record warmth in parts of Florida. And in London, 50 degrees. So we're relatively mild even there. Uh, we have some uh, decent heat right now in Jamaica, 88 degrees, partly sunny. Generally dry there. Really the big deal across most of the Caribbean has been the trade winds that are still strong, creating large waves and even the concern of some rip currents for swimmers. And that's been a bigger issue in some of the other islands of the true Caribbean to our south and southeast. As we look at the extended forecast, our next opportunity for any showers of significance comes in on Saturday after we get through tonight. And we'll be hanging out in the low 70s for highs over the next five days. The weekend looks pretty good and we'll be dealing with a dry weather set up for most of the time, Sunday and Monday. Overnight lows consistently in the mid-60s is a reason why Bermuda is such a nice place to live as we're not battling the snow that you may see in the international news front. Uh, maybe you're watching the Olympics. A little more comfortable down this way. Have a good one out there. AccuWeather was presented by BFNM Insurance Group.
The whole concept came from the collaboration with BFNM and the America's Cup. The Endeavour programme is the legacy of the 35th America's Cup that was here in Bermuda in June. And we've continued the, the charity now operating in Bermuda. And going forward, we thought, what a great opportunity for children on the autism spectrum. And hence, we actually developed the No Limits programme. They really do benefit from this kind of outdoor experience, this environment, you know, just yesterday going off the east end of Bermuda. I mean, they wouldn't have done that. Not many children in Bermuda have done that. And just them learning to take control of a, a large bit of um, transportation that they're doing at that age. And they, they may never get that opportunity. That's where you see the biggest progress is. Whether they were looking at their hand steering, you know, it's, now they're looking forward and actually looking where they're going. Because they've realized, oh, I know where my hand is. I can, I can do this without looking at my hand. We are so grateful for the Endeavor program and what it has done for the students on the autism spectrum. Can you believe it? The circus is back in town! I heard! February 22nd, 23rd, and 24th at the Ruth Cedar James Center for the Performing Arts. Featuring, as seen on America's Got Talent, Bellomania! Purchase your tickets today at ptix.pm. Don't forget, coming to Bermuda, Bella Mania Circus, February 22nd, 23rd, and 24th. This is a certified family event for all ages. You don't want to miss it. Romantics everywhere are celebrating St. Valentine's Day today, and a lucky few on the island have had the good fortune to be serenaded by a singing telegram, while also benefiting a good cause. Hal Davis explains. It came as a shock to almost all the recipients. So deep in love, you have made my life For Lauren Joins, a teacher at Delwood Middle School, it was an unexpected surprise from her husband, Charles. He's made my whole year. <laughs> He's great. He's wonderful. When I wake up in the morning. Another teacher, this time Donna Edwards at Cedarbridge. Just want to look at you And I know it's gonna be It's gonna be A lovely day I do know exactly who it's from <laughs> so, And I'll say thank you But while the singing telegrams clearly brought a great deal of joy There's a serious purpose behind the fun this is a fundraiser for Big Brothers Big Sisters of Bermuda. We are a mentoring agency. And as you see, I have young Zakai with me, who's actually one of our ambassador brothers, that woke up and said, I want to be a part of this. He put on his little jacket and his tie and said he wanted to help us hand out the Valentines today. So the fundraiser, all proceeds will go to Big Brothers Big Sisters core mentoring program. So we just want to thank everybody for participating today. Yes, a donation of $150 was needed to get the full singing telegram treatment. Katrina's mother, among those getting a surprise today. Mama. <laughs> Mama, you know I love you. So if you've gone with the more conventional chocolates or flowers this time, perhaps it's time to start saving so you can really impress next year. And, as the organizers say, help spread love across Bermuda. Lucky ladies. Well, turning to sports news, a young Bermudian football referee tells us about his experience officiating in Jamaica. Reggie Lamb and Carlisle United fall. And Vanessa James and her partner finish sixth in the Winter Olympic Games pairs figure skating. Earl Basin has the details of these stories and more in tonight's sports report. Bermuda's FIFA-listed referee Tashan Simons is recently back from his experience of officiating in two Jamaica Premier Division matches. Simons, the day before his match, was watching another match in Jamaica that was abandoned due to crowd control. He talked about that experience being there and how he viewed Jamaican football. For me, it was like seeing what it could get like, but I knew that if the referee team had a good game, or what they say will be a good game because no fan says it's a good game <laughs> if the team loses, right? <laughs> but if the referee team didn't influence the game, I knew that it shouldn't get like that in our game. Right. So, I'm um, from as a lot of the stuff that the people were saying, like the referees were saying, down there, it doesn't always get like that, and probably that's the first abandoned match in a good bit of years. So, I just felt that 
it was just something I can expect, isn't it? if it does get to that point. John Stead scored twice to help Knotts County get their promotion push back on track as his double downed Reggie Lamb and his Carlisle United teammates 2-1 to one at Meadow Lane last evening. After participating in the team competition, Morgan Cypress and Vanessa James went to the center ring for their short program as the Winter Olympic Games continued in Pyeongchang and they have kept their medal dream alive, finishing sixth with a score of 75-34. Eight-time world champion Flora Duffy is to headline Abu Dhabi's elite women's field come March 2nd. Nine of the top 10 women in triathlon will lead the pack of 50 women from 20 countries as the ITU World Triathlon Series gets underway. The world-class field is set to tackle a 750-meter swim, a 20K bike, and a 5K run course. The women's field is crowded with world champions, Olympians, title holders, and contenders. It includes Bermuda's Flora Duffy, the ITU World Triathlon Series champion, New Zealand's Andrea Hewitt, who is the Abu Dhabi defending champion, Austria's Sarah Willick, who earned a podium finish in Abu Dhabi last year, world number two, Australia's Alicia Gentile, world number three, and USA Olympian Katie Zephyrus, and Olympic medalist Great Britain's Vicky Holland. After a stunning 2017 that saw Duffy notch up four gold medal performances on the World Triathlon Series circuit and the world champion title, the Bermudian superstar is looking to make her debut an iconic one in Abu Dhabi. Gillian Tessera began competing in the D. Pelberg International Horse Jumping event in the Netherlands. On day one, Tessera competed in only one class but on two horses. Competing in the 1.25 meter in two phases class, Tessera and Chakova finished fifth. The pair clocked a clear first phase time of 31.82. They would then clock a second phase clear time of 27.40. Tessera and Amarula finished 68th. They would clock a clear first phase time of 30.83, but they would have four penalty full points in the second phase going with a time of 28.63. Under the watchful eyes of the Bermuda National Swimming Coach Ben Smith, Bermuda's Work Academy students will compete in two international meets over the next few days. Sixteen swimmers will take to the pool for competition including Amali Argent, Brian Desmond, Jack Harvey, Taylor Horn, Caleb Ingham, Finn Mosley, Gabriella Pittman, Skylar Paul, Ambaya Smith, Lewis Sweeney, Talia Thompson, Jesse Washington, Logan Watson-Brown, Taylor White, Sam Williamson, and Keegan Woolley. The swimmers will first compete in the 2018 Eastern Interscholastic Swimming and Diving Championships before heading to Germantown Academy to compete. Former Carifta Swimming Championship medalist Emma Harvey represented Millfield during the Somerset ASA Swimming County Championships. Harvey swam the anchor leg for Millfield Girls 200-meter medley relay team that recorded the fastest time of 2.04.36. Harvey would record the fastest time during the girls 16 and over 50 meter butterfly preliminaries touching the wall in a time of 28.49. Harvey would also swim the fastest qualifying time in the girls 16 and over 100 meter freestyle preliminaries with a time of 1.00.91. In the girls 16 and over 100 meter freestyle final, Harvey would stand on top of the podium with a gold medal time of 59.39. She would then swim the second leg for the Millfield mixed 15 and over 200 meter freestyle relay team that would clock a winning time of of 14356. Sears is Bermuda's largest home appliance store with over 200 appliances in our showroom. We have refrigerators and freezers, gas ovens and electric ranges, washers and dryers. Sears has a wide selection of craftsmen's tools and accessories. Beautify your home with our lawn and garden tools. We have everything you need for outdoor entertaining. Located at 41 Victoria Street, Sears is open Monday through Saturday from 9 a.m. to 7 p.m. Sears, reliable delivery, quality service, and everyday low prices. Step into the next generation of sinks, faucets, tubs, and more with the bold look of Kohler. Choose from a range of whole room solutions or let an individual piece be your guide for a feel-good, look-good quality. Pure inspiration at your fingertips. Kohler's Next Generation Showroom at BAC. And that's our broadcast for this evening. I'm Jasmine Patterson. Thanks for watching. Good night. Jasmine Patterson's